Welcome to part four of the link shortener series with Laravel 8. This video is going to be probably the most fun of the series because we're going to make a lot of the tests turn green, which we wrote in the last video. And so basically this whole test suite, if you didn't watch the last one, you should because it's, uh, it's really great information. Um, it basically teaches you the basics of feature testing within Laravel, uh, specific to Livewire actually, which is really cool. So uh, basically they all fail, all the tests we wrote. So now I'm just going to go through basically creating the routes, the controllers, and, uh, and the Livewire components to make most of the tests pass. And then in the video after that, we'll focus on each component specifically and getting it to work correctly the way we need to in order to get the test pass and in order for the functionality to work the way we intend it to work. Uh, the way we intend for it to work, right? So the first thing I want to do here is actually go into, well, we're going to actually go test by test. So let's say I want to run this test here. Uh, it's going to fail. And we can see that it fails because the links.create route doesn't exist. And of course it doesn't because we haven't created any routes yet. And so the first thing I want to do is actually create a route middleware or a, a route group with a middleware. And we're just going to use auth because we don't want any of these routes for creation, editing, and actually seeing the links to be not password protected with an account, right? So uh, that's done with route colon colon middleware. Then you put an array of middlewares you want to uh, basically authenticate with there uh, or check against there. And we can use arrow group, put a function in here. And within here, we can define the routes we want to be uh, secured behind these middleware. So the first route I'm going to create is actually that get route for the create. So I'm going to define this as a get and it's going to be slash links slash create. I'm going to try to abide by the uh, CRUD naming conventions here. Uh, but just for the purposes of testing, I'm going to return a view, uh, the welcome view, just so I can demonstrate that the, the failure in that test we just ran will actually change because this link uh, this link slash create route now exists, although we do need to include a name. So this would be links.create. Let's go back to the test and rerun it. Let's see, now we're getting the error, cannot find livewire component create dash link. Now of course, can't find it for two reasons. It one doesn't exist and it's also not being returned here. So uh, the easiest way to fix this obviously is return that livewire component. Well, I'm gonna actually choose to return all my components from a link controller. And this is not typically something I do, although I am building this for myself and I want it to be sort of uh, extendable and for lack of a better term. And I want to have a link controller that uh, basically returns the correct component because what if I need to uh, one day add some logic into that controller? So I'm gonna just run everything through a controller, even though I could return the component itself here. And I'm going to, well, First, we need to create that controller. So let's do that. Let's do PHP artisan uh, make controller link controller. So now we have a link controller. And within here, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with controllers by now because you're watching Laravel testing stuff. I'm sure you've built controllers before. Uh, let's create a create method. And within that create method, let's just return a view which is links dot create. So that's another twist here. I'm going to return a view called links dot create. And that link, that view rather, doesn't actually exist either. So we're going to go into resources and we're going to create a new directory called links. And within here, we're going to create a new file called create dot blade dot php. And this won't change the state of the test. It's still going to fail because that component is not being returned. But if we now import the new link controller and make sure that we're doing colon colon class and also specifying the create method, we are now, if I put a DD in here, so DD1, if I run that test here, we should see DD1 because it'll get stopped within that create method. And we do. So our, our create method is working the controllers being linked correctly. Now it's just a matter of creating that actual Livewire component. So we could do that with PHP artisan make Livewire. I think we called it create link. So that'll create both the component class and uh, the template file, which it does. So that's perfect. 
Let's go into our create.blade.php and actually just return that. So uh, let's return create-link, I believe. And now let's rerun our test. So we should be returning that Livewire component and it should pass. And it passes because acting as the user, we're going to the route links.create, which now exists, we just created it. That's going into our link controller. Our link controller is returning our create.blade.php, which will be nice because we could style around the Livewire component within this uh, template before it renders the, the component, if that makes sense. And then it's actually seeing that we, it's asserting that we see the Livewire component create dash link, which we do because we've actually just created that now. So I'm gonna repeat this for the other ones and then we will not have uh, all our tests failing anymore. We'll just have the logic ones failing. So I'm gonna copy this. Let's just create the index one first. So index should be up top always. Uh, that'll go to the index method of the link controller. And we decided to name it just links in the previous video. In the links controller, we want to create an index method, which again should be up top index. And in here we want to return view links dot index which now takes us back to the resources folder. We're gonna create a new file called index.blade.php. Perfect. Let's now go ahead and actually create our component. So let's call it uh, PHP artisan make live wire uh, link table. I'm not sure if that's the best name, but we'll just roll with it for now. So we created the component link table and now let's just output it. So this will be link dash table. Let's go back to our test here. Link index page contains live wire component. Let's see if that will pass now. And it sure does, which is great news. But uh, we still have the edit one to go. So if we run this now, it fails because that route doesn't exist. I've seen this before. Let's go ahead and create that. So below the create one, we're gonna make an edit one. This is gonna be links.edit, link controller edit method, which should be below the create method by convention. We can copy this, select both instances of the word create here, replace with edit. Now, of course, we're taken back to the resources folder, edit.blade.php, and we need to output the live wire. Uh, I believe it would be edit-link which of course doesn't exist. So we can go back into our editor and just run php artisan make colon livewire edit link. That will create a new component for us. And now if we go to the test here and rerun this one, we pass, which is great. So uh, we've just corrected three tests and they're passing, but the functionality that doesn't work. So that kind of speaks to the importance of writing uh, of tests for all edge cases, which we actually haven't. Uh, we should be testing that these links are behind authentication and all this kind of stuff. But for the purpose of this tutorial, this series, I wanted to keep it kind of simple. So um, if you are writing tests for your own applications and you're planning on having uh, many users on it, I definitely would recommend splitting up your tests into other classes and, and testing more specifically for like really important things uh, using these same methods. So now we can actually go ahead and well, we can't fix any of these, but we can, I believe we can fix up the redirection ones. So the first test we have here is acting as the user. We get the route redirect and we pass in the link slug. Okay, that doesn't seem too bad. And then we assert redirect to this arrow link arrow URL, right? And so I guess that means we first have to define a route. And I think our route is going to be route get and I wanted to find at the bottom because in this case, the order of the routes actually matters. I want this get to sort of act like a catch all and then just 404 if the slug isn't found, which it'll do because we're gonna be using route model binding. So I'm not gonna include any uh, slash link slash whatever, it's just gonna catch all and it's going to do route model binding here, but by the slug specifically, which is what this does. And that means any slug we input into a URL here, if the slug or the whatever we input doesn't match any of these routes up here, it'll just by default go to the catch all here. And 
I think I'm just going to make an invocable class to control this because it kind of makes sense to create a, a, like an invocable controller or an action, I guess you could call it, for this uh, functionality. It just seems like so different from everything else that it makes sense to have its own class. So I'll call it something like redirect to URL class. Uh, of course, I can't import that because it doesn't actually exist, but I could just create it here. Uh, redirect to URL.php. And let me just copy this over here. So we can copy the namespace, redirect to URL. Remove all this. I believe that's enough for now. Let's finish up the link here or the, uh, the route. So the redirect to URL class has now been imported. And I, w I think in the test, I decided to call this just redirect. And so now that we have this controller created, we can go and define an invocable method, right? So it's underscore underscore invoke. When this controller class is not really a controller anymore, when this class is called, it will just run this method because it's defined as underscore underscore invoke. Uh, as you can see in here in the, in the routes file, uh, we're not actually calling any specific method like we are up here. We're just calling the entire class. So that's that's kind of how that works. So now that we have that, we can actually uh, get our link. So we're passing in a link here. It's going to be binded by the slug, like I've said a couple times already. First thing we have to check is, is the link enabled to be redirected? That kind of only relies on is enabled. So if the link is enabled in the database, it should redirect. Uh, this would typically be done like if not this link is enabled uh, abort 403 i believe this would this would accomplish it um, although i actually find it nicer I, this is something i picked up at work so abort if and not this link is enabled and then i believe 403 yeah 403 so that kind of condenses this whole if statement into one line and that should abort 403 if the link is not enabled right and we could check that this actually happens in the test uh, afterwards. Uh, the next thing I want to do is if it hasn't aborted, we could just do a link increment, which is a database operation. It's just kind of like a shortcut at uh, incrementing an integer value. So I'm going to just in increment a link and redirect because if you don't remember, the links table has an integer column called redirects that defaults at zero and is the count at how many redirects have been made. And so within here, I'm just kind of incrementing that. Uh, whoops, this is actually doesn't need to be passed in this way. We just want to increment redirects that way. And then lastly, we want to return redirect to and we want to redirect to link URL. So let's see if the tests pass. Let's go back to our link test. And at the bottom here, can redirect. So acting as this user, we should be able to get this route, which now exists. And we pass in this link slug, which does exist. And we should assert a redirect to this URL. Let's run it and see if it works. Nope, we have a failure. Oh, I'm passing in this link. No, it's just link. So abort if link that's passed in here is enabled and return a 403 uh, with that as the abort uh, code. So let's run that test again and see if that fixes it. And it sure does, so that passes. We can redirect. Cannot redirect if link is not enabled. Okay, so we're disabling this link that we've created in our setup method. We're asserting that zero redirections have been made for this link. We're trying to redirect. We're gonna assert that it's a 403, and we're also asserting that it hasn't actually been redirected, so the count is still zero. Let's see if that works out. Sure does, which means that our abort if statement uh, is working. And the last one is link redirect count incremented on successful redirection. So are we incrementing the count if a successful redirection is made? Which could have probably been tested within the can redirect test, but I decided to write a separate one. Um, I guess it, it's fine. Uh, let's run this one. This one fails. Okay, so uh, it expected a one and it got null. Let's see why. Okay, I think I see what the problem is. So we're actually uh, calling this link redirect instead of redirects which is the, the proper name of the column in the database, which means that this is wrong too. So it's kind of puzzling that it's not throwing an error for that, kind of weird. Uh, the other thing is that I forgot to throw on a refresh here just to get fresh data, which is something I talked about in the last video. And I just unfortunately forgot to put that in these tests. 
So let's re rerun these te this test up here and see that it still passes. Sure does. And now let's check this one. Also passes, great. Okay, I'm gonna write one more quick test. Um, and I just wanna make sure that if we pass in a slug that doesn't exist, will we get a 404, right? So let's try to redirect to uh, a, a slug that doesn't exist. Redirecting to non-existent slug returns 404. Uh, let's first make sure that there is no such slug in the database. So um, this assert, we just assert database missing and pass in, let's say a slug. First of all, we need to define that we're querying the links table. And we want to assert that we are assert the database is missing a slug equal to random slug one, two, three. And let's first run that, make sure that passes. Okay, so that works. Now let's just indent this down a little bit and make sure that we get a 404 when we try to redirect to this slug. And we do. So that means when a slug doesn't exist, it'll go to that catch all at the end of the web route here, uh, web routes file. It'll go through here, but it won't route model bind to anything because that slug doesn't exist on the in the slug column of the links table and will uh, just be returned as a 404 doesn't exist, uh, which is correct. It should 404. So anyways, this video is complete. Uh, the tests are done. The uh, general setup is done. Now we need to actually set up all, all the logic within the components and the UI to make sure that uh, the rest of the test pass and our link shortener is actually going to work. So uh, if you're interested, check out the next video. It should be up by the time you're watching this. And thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.